Look at the absolute verticality that this sponge man is able to achieve. I mean, seriously, that is enough to rival Mario himself. Or at least it would be if not for the fact that SpongeBob is canonically four inches tall. Better luck next time, little guy. So anyways, about that jump height, what if it looked something more like this? See, doesn't that look like a much better video game now? Battle for Bikini Bottom is one of the video games of all time, and I would describe myself as quite intimate with it. I played through it dozens of times as a kid, and several years ago I was even a pretty decent speedrunner of the game. So when I felt like revisiting it this time, I decided to give myself an extra challenge. Can I beat the game without jumping a single time? Probably not, but let's give it a try anyways. So first things first, we start off in Spongebob's pineapple and we have to collect 50 shiny objects to escape this fruity prison. There's plenty of them around here and we're able to use Spongebob's bubble bash move to gain enough height to reach the higher up shinies. The bubble bash move is going to be our crutch for this run since it's the only method we have to gain height anywhere we want. There are a couple other scenarios where we're able to gain height, but those aren't going to come up until later. The bubble bash is very limiting compared to a jump. Spongebob will shoot straight up to attack, and then gravity will suck him back down to this cursed ground that we're all stuck on. Once we grab those 50 shinies, we're set free into Bikini Bottom and we can start knocking out some spatulas and socks. First, we'll go and grab the freebie sock that Patrick has next to him. He tells us that if we find 10 socks that he'll trade us for a golden spatula, so we'll go ahead and enter his home and demolish his couch to steal his own sock back. Now whether or not Spongebob's small, feeble arms can reach 8 more socks without any jumping, well, we'll see about that. Next up, we'll head into Squidward's house. Destroying all of his possessions will net us a sock, because apparently Spongebob is the villain of this game. And then, in order to get the Annoy Squidward spatula, normally you're supposed to jump around his house 10 times to piss him off into bribing you with the spatula to leave. But luckily for us, using the Bubble Bash move 10 times understandably pisses him off just as much. Okay, 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 just stop jumping, will you? I mean, if you insist. Next up on the chopping block is this guy right here, on top of the pineapple. Those last two were freebies, but this one promises to be an absolute pain in the ass because clearing a large horizontal gap is not exactly in Spongebob's skill set at the moment. We can go ahead and hit these buttons to make some platforms appear, and this is where it gets painful. First, a well-timed bash will get us on top of the first platform, and then some clever movement and a bit of button mashing can get us onto the eyebrow of Squidward's house. But the next part is a lot more difficult. After you use the bubble bash move, there's a small window of time before you land that you're allowed to input other moves. You're able to move forward, you're able to use the spin attack, or you're able to use the bubble bounce. Moving forward and using the bubble bounce is going to be our main method of clearing horizontal gaps, but as you can see, it does not exactly give us a lot of height or get us very far. Another way we can increase our horizontal distance is by walking off of ledges a bit before we use the bash move. This game is incredibly generous, and I mean INCREDIBLY generous, about the window of of time you have to input moves after walking off a ledge. I mean seriously, he's completely in the air and we're still able to use the bash as if he was on the ground. So to get to these two platforms that move up and down, we have to walk off the ledge as much as possible before using the bash, and then we need to get as much forward movement out of our bounce as possible. This has to be perfectly timed with the platform rising and falling in order for the platform to be underneath Spongebob when we use the bounce move. The next platform is a lot easier to get to, so that leaves just one more jump before we can snag the spatula. God damn it. And there we go, that was definitely a lot more involved than the last two spatulas, but I mean if that was possible, there's gotta be plenty of others that are possible, right? Before we move on to jellyfish fields, we're gonna use a glitch called the hand disable. In this game, there are two types of out of bounds zones. There's the zones at the edge of the map where Spongebob will crawl and claw on the ground, and then after a few seconds, the hand will grab you and place you back at your last checkpoint. And then there's other zones that are found at the bottom of pits, and basically everywhere else that you aren't meant to reach normally. If we stand right here in this out of bounds spot and let the hand take us into the taxi pad for jellyfish fields, we can press A to take the taxi, but the hand will take priority and place us back in the map. If we go ahead and repeat that last step, this game will have stored us using the taxi pad and actually take us to the level this time, and as you can see, the hand is still on screen when the level is loading. The effect of this is that the hand will no longer grab us in the second type of out of bounds zone that I described, so we can clip out of the map and fall to the very bottom of pits without getting taken away by the hand. 
And luckily for us, the game lets you warp to any mission you've unlocked at any time, so we don't have to worry about getting stuck in purgatory at the bottom of a pit. And then one more thing to note is that if we do go into the first type of out of bounds zone, the hand will still take us away and this will re-enable the hand, meaning we have to do the glitch again. Now let's head into Jellyfish Fields. This gap right here shows how poorly equipped we are to handle this environment. I mean, this is the tiniest gap in the goddamn world, and we can still barely get across it with a bash and a ledge grab. We're able to grab this sock right here, and even though we can technically grab the spatula right now because the hand is disabled, we can't quite get enough distance with any combo of our moves to make it there. I tried it from both the spot with the sock and from head on, and no dice. So we'll go ahead and press onward through the level, dealing with all of these small ledges that I'm certain the developers never thought would be an issue for anybody, but here we are. After many bashes, bubble bounces, and ledge grabs, we make it to the top of the bungee jump area where we can fall down and grab the spatula, but we're actually going to skip this one for right now, and you'll see why later. Up ahead, we can press this button to reveal our next major obstacle, these platforms that you're supposed to hop between to make it up to the rest of the level. These stupid platforms increase slightly in height as you go across them, which is just not what Spongebob wants to see right now. I tried over and over to bash and then bounce onto the platform, but I could just not make it happen. I tried climbing up some of the nearby rocks to get more height, but that was pretty much a dead end. After a lot of screwing around, I found that you can just barely, and I mean barely, get Spongebob to bubble bounce on the edge of the platform if you space out your inputs nearly perfectly. This was both a huge relief and a massive headache because yes, the challenge was still alive, but the next several jumps would be equally difficult if not impossible. After lots and lots of trial and error, I managed to make it to the big halfway point platform. I can't stress enough just how annoyingly precise a lot of these inputs are. Every time I fall down, I have to warp back to the bungee spatula and wait for the loading screen just to try the first jump all over again. So to make a long story short, I honestly can't believe that this vertically challenged sponge has come this far, but we still unfortunately have a lot of level left before we get to the spatula at the end. After smashing some robots and tikis, our next major obstacle are these little puddles of water, or goo as the game calls it, with tiny little islands in the middle. The thing that's super annoying about dealing with goo is that using your bubble spin or bubble bounce will drown you, which respawns you at the last checkpoint. Now, if you thought the run was stupid up to this point, this is where it becomes absolute bullshit. There's an oversight in this game related to Spongebob's damage animation. After the animation is finished, there is a single frame where Spongebob is considered grounded. On this singular frame, you're able to press any button as if Spongebob was still on the ground. In top level speedruns for this game, this is used in several places to essentially triple jump by double jumping after a damage boost. But luckily for our purposes today, you can also use the bubble bash on this single frame, which not only lets you gain extra height, but it also keeps the horizontal momentum you have from the damage boost. This opens up a lot of options throughout the game, as you can do this both with the recoil from touching goo or the recoil from getting hit by an enemy. Unfortunately, this game runs at 60 frames per second, so there is a 1 60th of a second window to press these buttons. I know that sounds ridiculous, and it certainly is, but at least for this section we can touch the goo and try it over and over until I can manage to hit the one frame input. I also have to move Spongebob in a very specific way to make sure he gets knocked back far enough to have enough momentum to clear the gap. We can use this exact same method to get across the next two goo sections, and now only one more obstacle remains between us and the spatula at the top of the hill. Before we do that though, we can hop across these bouncy, flower, tree looking things and grab the sock on top of the big jellyfish rock. I bounced up to this hidden fountain at the top of the level with a sock on top of it, and I tried to use another one frame damage boost to get this sock up here, but I couldn't manage to find an angle on the sock, so I just gave up on it. Back to the obstacle at hand, there's this wobbly bridge right here that tilts underneath Spongebob's sheer girth, which would be an issue if not for the fact that you can just spam the bubble bounce all the way across to prevent actually weighing the platform down. On the other side, all we have to do is slay these robots and we can finally get ourselves another spatula. All of that effort to cross this entire level was for one single spatula. Next up, we can head into the Jellyfish Caves area. Sliding down the slide isn't an issue for us, but neither of the socks on the slide are accessible without being able to jump. At the bottom of the slide, there's a section where we're supposed to destroy three Duplicatotrons and press three buttons in order to unlock some platforms to get us to Patrick. But these platforms are too tall and too far apart for us to have any hope of getting across them. So, this looks like a dead end, right? 
Well, not exactly. There's a trick used in speedruns to get this spatula without doing any of that by simply damage boosting into the cutscene trigger where you can save Patrick and he gives you the spatula. Lining up with this hammer robot and hitting a one frame damage boost input gives us just enough height and momentum to grab this spatula, which both looks impressive and is actually impressive. Activating this cutscene switches us to Patrick so we can pick up the spatula and keep moving on. Unfortunately, Patrick totally sucks in this challenge. Without jumping, he is completely glued to the ground. He doesn't have a move like Spongebob's Bash to give him any sort of height. So we can throw this watermelon at the button to open the gate, but after that there's a tiny little ledge that just completely defeats Patrick. Even if we did manage to get here as Spongebob, you still need Patrick's throwing ability to press buttons, so we're just completely defeated here. We can warp back to the bungee spatula and grab that now, and there is a very specific reason that I'm grabbing that now instead of before, but we'll get to that in a minute. For now, we'll head back to the overworld because we have enough spatulas to unlock downtown Bikini Bottom. At first, it does feel like a lot more game has opened up to us, but this level is pretty deceiving. Mrs. Puff tasks us with collecting 11 steering wheels for reasons, I don't know, so we can grab a couple of those right in front of us with some bashes. We'll first head over in this direction for the Tiki's Go Boom spatula. You just need to line up with the cannon so that it destroys the Tiki's covering the buttons, and then we can press all of them with some bashes to get on top of the buttons. The game then decides to spit directly in the face of our vertically challenged sponge friend by spawning the spatula on top of this very large statue. I tried many different ways to scale it with bashes, but did not have any luck, so this spatula is just out of reach. If it's any consolation, we can at least grab this sock over here. Yay. We can progress through downtown Bikini Bottom pretty normally from here, grabbing another steering wheel along the way. We can unlock the Sea Needle area by paying for this paywall, which was actually pretty promising at first, until I realized that you can't quite make it to the bungee hooks without jumping. So, this area is totally useless to us. Back in the downtown streets, I made it over to Gary, who unlocks this roof area for us, and this is sadly the end of the road for downtown Bikini Bottom. You're meant to use Sandy to traverse the rooftops of all these buildings, but Sandy has exactly the same problem that Patrick does in this challenge. She is completely glued to the ground. So without Sandy being able to hover, we can't make it any further in this level. Welp, that level was a little depressing. We didn't manage to get a single spatula, which is extra frustrating because a couple of them were just barely out of reach. So, what now? The challenge is over, right? I mean, we only have six spatulas, which isn't enough to unlock Goolagoon, let alone the first boss and second hub area. Well, there is another option available to us. Mr. Eugene Peter Krabs. In this game, Mr. Krabs has eight golden spatulas available for sale, and they each cost an increasing amount of shiny objects. It's only 3,000 for the first one, but they jump up by 500 in price every single time that you buy one. Grinding shiny objects this early in the game is slow, but absolutely possible, so after obtaining 40,000 shiny objects, we can trade them into Mr. Krabs and more than double our spatula count, putting us up to 14. We now have enough to enter Goolagoon, and we're just one shy of entering the Poseidome and fighting the first area boss. Let's head into Goolagoon, where we are immediately stopped by this tall platform and wide gap we have to cross. Flipping this platform is already challenging, but getting up onto it is even worse. I'm sure there's some sort of damage boost one frame input you can do to get up onto here, but since I still have the hand disabled, I found that you can actually just walk all the way around this area out of bounds and eventually make it to the beach. At first, this gave me a lot of hope, but this is just a big and deceptive dead end. We can talk to Larry and Mrs. Puff to unlock some missions, but Larry's mission requires us to make it all the way through every area of Goolagoon to clear, and Mrs. Puff's mission requires us to reach heights and clear gaps that are just not accessible to this sponge. Once we make it to the goo over here, it becomes very apparent that there is absolutely no way for us to make it across to the giant sandcastle over there, meaning that Goo Lagoon is another strikeout of a level. So, we're stuck at 14 spatulas and we can't enter the Poseidome to continue the game. Challenge run over, right? Left. Remember how I kept saying that the bungee spatula from Jellyfish Fields would be relevant later? Welcome to later! When grabbing that spatula with the hand disabled, Spongebob will collect it but then fall into the goo below. Once he respawns, he will go back into the animation from collecting a spatula, but since we just respawned, the game lets us pause during the animation while it's saving the game, which is not normally possible. 
If we warp back to Bikini Bottom while the game is saving, you can see that the save game icon stays on the screen. While the game is in this state, the hand is 100% disabled, even in the zones that would normally take you away and re-enable the hand. Using this, we're able to walk all the way around all of the invisible walls that are in our way, and eventually, eventually we can make it all the way over to the second part of the hub world, completely skipping the first area boss. This doesn't open up quite as much as you'd think at first, though. We can grab a couple more socks near and inside Shady Shoals, and we do have access to the Mermelair, but we'll take that on later. The spatula on top of Shady Shoals is far, far out of reach for now, so let's head into Sandy's Tree Dome. In here, there's a ton of robots just running around, and while some of them are kind of funky to kill without jumping, it's really nothing compared to what we've been through so far. Sandy will give us spatula number 15, which means we have enough to go back and challenge the first area boss for another spatula. Now, if you played this game as a kid, you might think that this boss is impossible without jumping, since all three phases require you to jump up and slam the ground in order to knock the head off the robot. And additionally, phase 2 requires you to play as Patrick, who has no method of leaving the ground. Well, luckily for us, right before Robot Sandy becomes vulnerable to getting her head knocked off, she leaps up and slams on the ground, which launches us up into the air without having to press any buttons at all. So you can simply let her launch you up in the air, slam back on the ground, and then just damage her like normal. The only other challenge this boss poses is the clothesline move, but if you just run behind her as she starts the move, it won't actually hit you, making this fight one of the easiest spatulas so far. Beating this boss also unlocks the Bubble Bowl, which is not a big help in terms of movement, but hey, I'll take more options where I can get them. At this point, we could hop into the Mermelair, but even if we somehow managed to get all 8 spatulas, that still wouldn't be enough to unlock Rock Bottom, which needs 25 spatulas. So instead, we need to set our sights on getting to the third and final part of the hub area. Obviously, if we can't get 25 spatulas, getting 40 of them is very much out of the question, so what can we do? Well, in speedruns, there's a trick that involves using a damage boost on top of the police station to fly over this wall and make it into the third hub. Pissing off this tiki and then timing a bash to take damage from it at the highest point possible will launch us towards the wall, and then hitting the one frame bash after the damage animation will give us just enough height to launch over this wall, putting us into the third hub. There is absolutely no way in hell we're gonna get on top of this bucket, but maybe we'll have more luck inside. Going into the bucket, the final boss door with its monstrous 75 spatula requirement is staring us down, mocking our mere 16 spatulas. On top of this vent over here, there's a spatula that you're meant to wall jump up to, so let's try our hand at that. We don't even need to use a one frame input to damage boost off these tiki's onto the vent, which is a nice surprise. And then if we nudge ourselves as high up as possible onto the slope, we can actually grab the spatula with a bash. No wall jumps required. Now, we can head behind the Krusty Krab and grab a sock, and then we can head inside which is absolutely overrun with robots. Much tougher ones than we're supposed to deal with this early in the game. This level is very difficult, but in a little bit of a different way than everything else has been difficult so far, since this is the first level where losing all of our health is actually a threat. There's no way to get onto the top level to take out the sleepy time robots with a bash or a ledge grab, so we're gonna need this chuck to throw a missile at us and damage boost us up top. After that, we can tiptoe over and take out the sleepy times, but we need to be careful not to lose too much health. After that, we need to figure out a way to get up onto this rafter so we can take out the Duplicatotron. Using a bash into the sloped roof, we can hop onto these boxes and then get a ledge grab onto the rafter on the other side of the roof, and we can even hit the Duplicatotron with a Bubble Bowl from right here. But for the life of me, I just could not hit the Chuck up here with a Bubble Bowl. After experimenting around for a little bit, I managed to get another chuck damage boost onto the same rafter as the Duplicatotron, so I can bowl into the Tiki and take out both of those bastards in one go. After that, I very carefully used the Bubble Bowl to take out the rest of the robots since I had no extra health to work with, and boom, another spatula down. Now from here, we don't really have a lot to work with. The Mermelair and Spongebob's Dream are the only two levels that don't have spatula requirements, so let's try our hand at Spongebob's Dream first. Right off the bat, it doesn't really look like these platforms are going to be happening. There's so much height and distance to clear, but there's actually a lot more leeway than you might think. The momentum from these platforms rotating can be carried over into a bash, which lets you clear a lot more horizontal distance than you can normally. We can also intentionally stand on top of the spikes to get a free jump from the damage boost, which makes things much easier.
And by some act of God, we made it all the way up. Not only did we make it, but it was actually relatively easy compared to some of the other obstacles we've climbed. I don't think that we're going to be able to get the bouncing ball spatula as it's both high up and far away, but we can head down to Sandy's Dream. Going into Sandy's Dream doesn't prove very useful because even if we could get onto the slide, there is absolutely zero chance we could ever make it all the way across without jumping. So instead, let's set our sights on Super Bounce, the spatula on top of Squidward's house in the dream level. We can pay 1000 shinies to this clam to unlock these bounce pads, but that bounce pad is way out of reach. The only things we have to work with are the slide itself and this tartar sauce robot off to the side over here. After a lot of screwing around, I managed to make this happen. After that miracle, we can bounce up the platforms like normal and just barely land on top of Squidward's house, snagging spatula number 19. Out of everything we've done so far, this honestly might be the most insane one. This is one of the most vertical spatulas in the whole game, and we managed to get it without jumping, which I think is pretty cool. However, once again, this is the end of the road for this level, because Squidward's dream is 100% not happening, and even though with some clever movement we can make it down to Mr. Krab's dream, we can't climb these burgers in order to destroy all the robots. Crossing over to Patrick's dream to get the two spatulas over there also looks incredibly out of the question. So, we're left with the Mermelair as our only hope. If we can somehow get six more spatulas, then we could unlock rock bottom and try our hand at some more spatulas there. Right off the bat, our first objective is to climb to the top of the entrance area, and although climbing is not exactly our strong suit at the moment, this level is actually super easy. There's only one even slightly tall ledge that we have to climb to make it to the end, but Spongebob actually for once helped me out and just ledge grabbed it completely painlessly. Everything else is basically just a little staircase, so we can grab spatula number 20 at the top of the level. Once we enter the computer room, however, it seems like this might finally be the end of the road for this challenge. No matter how hard I try, I'm not able to get onto this rising platform to gain any more height. We would be able to complete the funnel machine and spinning tower spatulas with Patrick if not for this stupid, tiny little ledge that Patrick has no way of climbing over. Like seriously dude, it's like 3 inches, just step up onto it. Before calling it quits however, I decided to go back and use save states on Dolphin to experiment around with trickier strategies that might be able to squeeze out just a few more spatulas. First, I headed back to Jellyfish Fields, and I actually did find that I was able to get out of bounds over here by doing a one frame bash off the damage from this Duplicatotron. After walking all the way over to the very end of the jellyfish caves, there's unfortunately no way to get back into the map to continue as normal. In speedruns of this game, you can actually clip back inbounds with a ledge grab on the slide right above, but there's no way to do that without a jump. I also nudged around trying to see if I could trigger any checkpoints or anything, but no dice. Back in downtown Bikini Bottom, I hopelessly threw myself at the statue again, but I wasn't able to get any closer to the spatula than I was before. I tried doing some one frame bash boosts off this Thunder Tiki's explosion, but nothing was working. The spatula feels like it has the most potential to be solved out of any of the unsolved ones so far, so maybe one day we'll figure it out. I headed back into the sea needle to give it another go, and no matter what, I still cannot get onto any of the bungee hooks. However, maybe we don't need to get onto the bungee hooks at all. Since the last time we were here, we gained the bubble bowl power, which gives us a projectile to throw at the tiki's down below. I cleared out the tartar sauce robots and started chucking bowling balls at the tiki's way below me, and after lots and lots of balls, I actually managed to take out all of the tiki's from the first window. So, maybe this is possible after all? Well, sadly, no. Using a lot of save states, I barely managed to traverse these platforms, and I started taking bowling shots on the tiki's below me. I was able to body some of them, but unfortunately the second and third windows have some tiki's that are too far down for the bubble bowl to reach. Once the ball gets too far away from Spongebob, the ball will despawn. If I jump down with the ball, it actually does go far enough to hit them, but this doesn't help very much because the death plane at the bottom will kill me anyways. Oh, and by the way, if you die, all of the tiki's respawn, so you have to kill them all on the same life in order to get the spatula. This is another level that seems like it has a lot of potential to be beaten jumpless, but after over an hour of trying with save states, I still wasn't able to do it. I went back to Spongebob's dream to see if I could cross over to Patrick's dream using save states and one frame damage boosts, and even though I found this super badass boost using the sleepy time robot, I wasn't able to get homeboy the rest of the way across the blocks. Once again, there's lots of potential here, and there's even two spatulas waiting over there if we ever manage to make it. And then there was one. The only level left for us to throw ourselves at again is Goo Lagoon. 
I managed to use a one frame damage boost off of this robot to get to this island out here, which is a pretty sick looking trick, and then I messed around trying to use a speedrun trick called Sponge Glide. Sponge Glide is a really funny looking trick that lets you fly all the way across the ocean to the other side, and then you can play the whole level backwards and get a ton of spatulas, but unfortunately there's no way to get enough momentum for the damage boost without jumping. I used a one frame bash to get on top of this building right here and managed to grab a 10th sock which allows us to go back to Patrick and trade it in for a spatula, putting us up to 21. The final thing that I tried to progress through this level was to go back to the out of bounds area I initially used to reach the beach, and after walking around to this janky, hard to see collision for a while, I managed to do this. Honestly, walking underwater in video games is really nostalgic for me since I grew up watching glitch videos for video games all the time, so this definitely brought a smile to my face. After walking all the way across the entire level, I meandered under the moat, and look at that, there's a spatula down here. This is the spatula called Over the Moat, and it's sitting out of bounds under the water until you pay to activate the spatula, but since we're down here, we're able to collect it. I tried my best to trigger any checkpoints I could from underwater, but none of them extended deep enough to spawn me anywhere new, so this is where our spatula count stands. 22, which is not even a third of the amount we need to beat the whole game. I was hopeful going into this challenge that we'd be able to get further, and honestly, I do believe that it maybe might be possible with tool-assisted strategies. I mean, seriously, look at tool-assisted speedruns for this game. It's just not even the same thing. And actually, if we look at this task video, we can see that on top of Shady Shoals is almost collected jumpless, we just need to be able to skip the jumps to get on top of this fountain to set up the damage boost storage, and then on top of the chum bucket is actually collected jumpless. So that brings the known possible jumpless spatulas to 23, but I wasn't able to pull off this trick myself, so we're still gonna call it 22 for the human jumpless challenge. In all honesty, beating this game without jumping is actually less out of reach than it seems. If we managed to collect 40 spatulas and defeat Robot Patrick, we'd unlock the Cruise Bubble, which would make a couple more spatulas possible on its own. But it would also give us access to the most infamous glitch in the game, Cruise Boosting. Cruise Boosting is essentially a way to store forward momentum, and you can combine that with a Bubble Bash to pretty much replace the normal jump. I mean seriously, look at what kinds of stuff would be possible if we could cruise boost. So if you guys do decide to mess around with this challenge yourselves, be sure to let me know if you manage to figure out any other spatulas. If we manage to get further in the game, maybe I'll make a follow up video. I'd also be open to the idea of trying a new game plus sort of no jump challenge where I can start with the cruise bubble and bubble bowl from the very beginning, which gives us access to cruise boosting right away. It wouldn't count as a legit run, but I do still think it'd be kind of entertaining, so let me know if that's something you might want to see. Anyways, thanks for watching all the way through this video. If you enjoyed it, then be sure to subscribe because it really is genuinely the best way to support future videos. Have a good one, y'all.